Good afternoon, good evening. How is everyone out there in the atmosphere? I am feeling fabulous today. This is your girl, Sister Talk with Valerie, your chocolate smoothie coming to you tonight. Listen to us every Friday at 7.30 on Untapped Music Radio. I can't tell you enough. If y'all ain't heard about Untapped Music Radio, y'all better get with the program. Tonight we have an additional wonderful guest with us. Me and Miss Vina are here. And also we got the young generation, Miss Kia Kelly, my oldest girl. And my, no, she a woman, y'all. She ain't no girl. <laughs> She's a grown woman. <laughs> but we thank these ladies for being with us tonight as our conversation and topic of the evening is love, L-O-V-E. And there is so much to say about that. I want to read um, what the Bible says about it, but I also want these ladies to do a real quick introduction of themselves before we hit the ground running. Okay, let's start with Miss Vina. Miss Vina, how you doing today? I'm doing well. God is amazing. We're glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you here. Yeah. And Miss Kia. Hello, I'm good. I'm feeling great. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Oh, well, I'm Kia, Valerie's daughter. And that's the <laughs> honor in itself. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So I wanna there is so much for us to say on this this topic, and it's been really penetrating through my spirit all week long, but I want to first tell you what the what the word says about this subject. This is in 2 Corinthians 13, and it says, love is patient and love is kind. Love is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered, selfish, or irritable. It does not keep a record of wrongs. It is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love does not give up. And is faith, hope, and patience never fails. Love is eternal. And, agape, and, it, and it finally it says agape love is not self-love. That is um, from, this is the, the NIV version. But love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, love is not rude. It's not selfish. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. It's not happy with the truth. It does not give up. It, it never fails. It always hopes. I have a sign um, that tells, that has 2 Corinthians on it because I always need to be reminded about love. I think this is an important topic because, you know, we talk a lot about God. We know the love of God is ever present. God's love is is you know, a love like we can't even compare to anything else. But in order, I think some of the, the reasons why we have a difficult time with this, this whole love thing is one, the love that we have, learning to love ourselves and what that means so that we can reflect that love and give that love to others and be able to receive it from God because he wants to give it to us. So I want to ask ladies, I want to ask your thoughts on what do you think hinders us from experiencing and giving complete love? Ooh. Oh, this, this is actually the topic of a book that I was writing. Don't ask me about that. <laughs> But it was actually the topic and what I bought, what I kind of came to the conclusion was, is that what prevents us from experiencing giving and receiving love is the, the fact that we have all these narratives that we tell ourselves about what love is and about um, who we are. And a lot of times those stories that we tell ourselves um, interrupt that experience, interrupt us receiving love. And I kind of took it back to like, okay, some of the stories we might tell ourselves deal with who we have experienced um, as examples of love in our childhood. So just seeing like what love is. So for example, 
um, maybe seeing arguing or fighting or maybe seeing um, rejection or love being withheld. So then there's a story that you create that when you experience love, it has to include those things. And so in my book, I'm talking about how we kind of need to unlearn those stories so that we can give and receive and experience love in a different way. So instead of saying, this is who I am as a person, and this is who I'll always be, this is who men are, this is who women are, this is who the people I choose to love are, this is who they'll always be, kind of unlearning those stories that we tell ourselves so that we don't hinder the, the experience of love and learning new definitions of what love is. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I agree. And also, we have to learn to love ourselves because of our yesterday and because of our past, um, because of our past relationships or the relationships, like Kia said, that we see in our household. Um, we depict that in our story, and that's not necessarily a healthy love. But we don't love ourselves as a culture, as individual, as women, you know, we find fault. Oh, I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I got my nose is too big. My thighs are too this, that, and another. Love all of you. God created each and every one of us in his image. So he's, you know, he looks just like you look. And so we have to learn to love that and undo, like he has said, what was done prior. Say, okay, I'm not going to carry that luggage or, you know, like um, Erica Badu, you know, bag lady, we carry in, or bag man, we're carrying that history of yesterday's example of love. And that wasn't healthy, nor was it true, um, or, you know, and so we, we have to let those things go. We have to begin to just dissect what was good in that thing. Uh, you know, him keeping me hostage away from my family or me being secluded is not necessarily love, that's control. It's a difference. And, you know, arguing and screaming and fighting at two in the morning, that's not love. You know, that's you guys are really in a bad state. You're not respecting each other as individuals. You're not, you know, speaking sweet nothings that we talked about before our words, how we speak to one another and how we speak to our children and even how we speak to ourselves. You know, you know, if I'm always putting myself down, well, I don't look like she looks and she's got well, that's. You and her are two different people. Love what you do have and embrace what you do have. And if you have something that you want to change, then work on changing what you need to change, but not focus on what everybody else considers to be the good person or the person, the, the shape or uh, the end thing today. Focus on loving yourself and knowing that God loves you first and you have to then love yourself. It's impossible to love somebody else if you don't love yourself, if you can look in the mirror, because I've seen, and even in my time, when I had difficulties in different areas, I, re I remember brushing my teeth, washing my face, and never looking at myself in the mirror, because I was disgusted of what I did, or what I allowed to happen to me, or what was currently going on, that I never took and focused on what I look like, you know, and it's a lot of people in that area or who's struggling with that because they don't love what they see. So I'm going to say that that's what we say a lot. We say, um, you got to love yourself. That's the message. Love yourself. And, and my thought is this, if, if, a, if an M, if a perfect loving, all knowing and all giving God can tell us that we were created in that image, and we still don't love ourselves, then it can be as simple as saying, love yourself. There has to be some kind of practical steps that people can begin to dig deep inside to identify. Because I, I can hear people in my head, and I've said it to myself, how do I begin to love myself? I can, it is easy for me to fathom that I have an omnipresent, omnipotent God. But when I match myself to that God who created me in his image, there's a disconnect. People who have been hurt and betrayed and abandoned and abused can't relate to that. So what are, if we're saying today, all right, I want to love myself 
What does that look like? What do we say to people? Well, I think you have to start with the steps and it's not an easy process. This is something that you have to work towards daily. That's why the Bible says, renew your mind daily. You know, let this mind that's in Christ Jesus also be in thee. You have to know what God says about you, that you're beautifully and wonderfully made. Maybe put that a sticker on your refrigerator, you know, a coffee pot on the mirror and begin to undo what was done years for years, you know, you're not gonna be nobody. You look like your mama and she wasn't nobody. So you have to start saying, no, I am somebody. Christ says, "Who? what does God say about me in the Bible? And start there, like that scripture you gave, you know, love is patient. Am I patient? I'm impatient. So now let me work on my patience with my kids. I, I love you kids. I'm gonna be more patient. Please forgive me in that area. And begin the process of healing. It's a daily. The Bible says the race is not given to the swift, but those who endure to the end. That means continuously. And we're going to fail. You know, some days I get up and I don't feel beautiful, you know, but I have to say I'm beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of God. I, my health, I've got issues in my body. You know, I sometimes I get back to stuttering the way I was when all of this stuff happened to me and I have to slow down. Okay, slow, think process it. Or I'll get frustrated and just give up. No, you can't. You have to begin to have the conversation with yourself. What is it that I don't like about myself? And how come? Is it because something that somebody said or did? Or is it something that I can change and deal with? And and it, it's a daily process. And you have to start at the beginning, you know, um, hostile environment, living in a place that has, didn't give you love, you know, or they didn't know how to. Yeah. yeah. I always think about, um, you know, women or women, and people always say this term, especially I hear from a lot of women, <laughs> I love hard. I love hard, you know. And it's like, and, and you imagine what that means, like you'd be willing to do anything for a person, you'll be there for them, you'll support them, and you'll lift them, uplift them, and encourage them, and don't want them to talk bad about themselves, and defend them to other people and stick up for them, even if they're wrong. And, and it's like that, that loving hard is something we have to do for ourselves. Like support yourself, uplift yourself, like speak life into yourself. Even when you're um, wanting to feel bad about yourself, those same things that you'll be willing to do for another person to show them, I am worthy. I love you. Those same things you have to be say, well, will I fight this hard for myself? Will I go this hard for myself? Will I go the extra mile and do that extra thing for me? Um, how am I taking care of me? How am I making sure that I'm good, that I'm all right, that I'm, that I, that I feel good, that I'm in a, a good state of mind. And it's like, uh, we'll do that for everyone around us but never pour that same love into ourselves. And, and it's like, you're pouring from an empty cup. It's like, what are you really giving people? Are Then are you giving that extra mile to feel worthy, to feel like you are deserving of love? Or are you doing out of a genuine place in your heart? Or is it like a, a people pleasing kind of thing? Um, and I think the only way to really know that for sure is where that where that place is coming from is if you extend that same type of love to yourself first. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times you say, "Am I?" because we do have people ride or dies. You know, I'm a ride or die for mine. You know, I'm a I'm going to do whatever for mine because there's a need to have that person in our lives. We as women, we know how to nurture, caretake, you know, take care of, make them feel good. And sometimes we're afraid to even ask people for what we need because of rejection. So when certain seeds are planted, those seeds are of rejection, those, those seeds of um, being afraid to be let down, we get sometimes bigger. Well, I'm not going to ask anybody because I don't want to be let down. I'm going to do it myself. And in those times, we are taking on so much that we often fail to care for ourselves, right? Think about things like, like you said, Kia, what am I doing to take care of myself? Or even having a spiritual relationship, taking time for that. 
some people feel guilty. I'm not supposed to have time for myself. I'm supposed to do for other people because if I'm not doing for other people, who am I? You know, I've had those times. Who am I if I'm not doing for other people? Um, it says that love is not selfish, but it is selfish to feel that we are the only ones that can do something, that they need me, that if, if I ain't there, it ain't going to go right. That's a selfish, it might not seem like it, but that's a selfish attribute. Um, because a lot of times we get in God's way. We, I'll do it. I'm going to take care of so-and-so, fix it all up for such and such, do whatever, whatever. God, I got this. You go ahead. I know you're busy. I, I got this because I've always had this. So we got to learn that it's okay to take care of ourselves, to love on ourselves. I like that, Vina, you talk about it's a process. It's a step. You, you got to you gotta fake it until you make it almost. Yeah. I got stickers all around my house. If I don't feel beautiful today and I look in the mirror and say, you're beautiful. I don't really believe it, but I'm a it because that's a messiah until I feel like it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a good step. So yeah. when but but when we talk about people who have been um savagely abused, right? That's another level. We talked about hostile environments. That's difficult to even pretend like I'm worthy of love, Vina. What do you say to that? And that's why we find women and men go from one abusive relationship to another. Um, that's like turning in, I'm going to give up drugs for alcohol. So my first husband was physically abusive, but my second one is he's verbally abusive. So that's better. No, it's, it's still being in a hostile environment, there's still no love or respect for yourself because you don't know how to. And it's difficult for a lot of us to be alone because you don't like what you see when you're alone. That's a bad place. My pastor said it, I think, a week last week. He said, you can't be in the house by yourself with yourself. That's a bad, you, you're, in a, you're in bad shape, you know, because we don't like what we see a lot of times. We don't like some of the things that we did or allowed to be done to us. Um, and so we don't deal with it. I, I'll, that other thing you spoke about, the person who's, I, I'll do it, I'll do it. That's also a pride thing. You know, my work is here and yours is here. That's pride. You know, uh, you're not capable of doing it, so I'll do it. But it has to stay busy so you won't, be with yourself. And so you won't hear what God is saying to you. You won't begin the process of healing because he's a gentleman. He's not going to knock down the door. He's going to tap lightly like, hey, let's deal with that thing you did last night. Or let's deal with what happened when you were 12. Let's deal with it. Because he wants to talk about it because he wants to heal you because he's the ultimate healer. But we stay busy. And this is the thing that Corona shocked everybody. You ain't had nowhere to go. So you had to deal with that spouse who was getting on your nerve when you went to the gym, the grocery store, the, the rehearsals, the, the football games. You was everywhere but at home because you was not you were living in a hostile environment. But when you and that's why domestic violence and suicide and all these things have just blow blew up during Corona because you didn't have no way to go. You had to deal with you and you had to deal with God and you. Whatever that situation is, whatever's going on in your household, because the Bible said, get your house in order. <laughs> How can you help me if your house is tore all to pieces? So in, in this season, God wanted us to deal with our house, our heart, and our house situation. So if you living in hell and you ain't found a way out doing coronavirus, baby, go on and start figuring it out. It's time. It's time. Because this was the time out for, there was no kids, football games, ballerina, you know, dance studio. Oh my God, me and my girls on Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, church on Sunday. You know, we had nothing to do. So we had to sit with ourselves and God and deal with the shenanigans that we have been avoiding for years. I'm 51 and I'm telling you the stuff that I learned about me since Corona came out, my resilience, 
my hostile environment, my abusive relationship, that my abusive ways, you know, the way I talk to myself, the way I talk to my kids, it made me reevaluate everything and say, God, if you don't fix it, God, I'm putting it on your throne. God, if you don't do it, hallelujah. I'm telling you, when it, when it came down to the nuts and bolts of a thing, I was like, God, I'm jacked all up. I look good. We know how to dress this thing up, girlfriend. We know how to dress it up, men alike, girl, women, sure, everybody, we know how to dress it up. But during coronavirus for t almost two years, we had to deal with us and our junk. And some of, some of us wrote it down and put it in the book. Some of us picked up a bottle. Some of us picked up a gun. And some of us went to the loony bin. But you have to deal with it. It is open and it's, God is really in this season like, hey, let's deal with your yesterday. So you can forgive you. Because that's love is forgiveness, too. I say, Val, I forgive you for that. But every time we talk, girl, you know what you did. I haven't forgiven you. I haven't let, let it go. I'm still holding on to it. Because God said our sins are as the east is to the west. They're on two different sides. So he don't remember it. So who am I to keep remembering what you did? Because I haven't let it go. I haven't forgave you. I, I can't get past it. And why is that? You know, you have to, we have to, we have to start the conversation with ourselves and God and your accountability partner. You know, hey, look. I called you the other day. I was like, listen. And you was like, and listen. And I was like, OMG. Okay. And then I'm thinking, oh, is this me? You know, is this me? What do I have on, on my forehead? Are you crazy, son, or something? Why do people want to do this? And you like, no, nah, boo, that, that's not you. That's, that's on them. And you checked it in Jesus' way, not go all the way off. And I was like, okay, good. You gave me accountability, but you also um, affirmed me, said, no, sis, you did the right thing in that situation. You didn't lose your mind. You didn't get to cussing and screaming and slamming phones. You did the right thing. So it's okay. And just because people try you don't mean that you have to go the, the way they go. Miss Kenya, how did Miss Kelly. Yes, I'm listening. No, this is good. This is good. I, I, that's one of the lessons that I also learned during Corona was how to make myself happy when I don't have things to look forward to. Because before, like you said, it was always, oh, well, I'm going to get to go here and I'm going to plan this thing and I'm going to do that. And it was like, there is nowhere to go, like you said. So it was kind of like, how do you create those moments of internal joy? So I'm at a place, honestly, where I think I have um, really learned to just be comfortable in my own skin and comfortable with myself and love, love myself. But I think that there is a other, there's another end to the spectrum of love. I'm not saying, and, and I don't want it to look like you either hate yourself or you love yourself and you're conceited, but there is a place where you can get to where you are just so internal and introverted that you um, don't allow yourself to be vulnerable and open enough to allow people in. Um, and I think that's kind of where I'm at because I'm like, well, you know, for example, I stopped going to the gym, so I put on some weight. But I'm like, hmm, I still like my body. I like my big old <laughs> belly <laughs> and whatever. I just like it's me. I still think it looks beautiful. And my thought, my mind will go to, well, if I was, you know, in a relationship or if I had a spouse or I had a husband, I don't want him saying, mm, baby, putting on some weight. Because I'm like, I don't got to hear that because I'm fine with me. And like, <laughs> you know, and I think sometimes we can get to the, the place where we do love ourselves, but we also are like in this, this shell and, and not really trusting ourselves to create the appropriate boundaries and have discernment to pick the right partners when we do venture out and join on to not just romantic relationships with, 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 but with friendships and everything else. It's like, well, I'm safe inside my bubble, so I don't need to 
make connection and but connection and love is so important it's like why god put us here and we have to be able to connect to one another so that's another danger of of corona is we've learned to just be internal and it's like that's not where we were meant to be um we're meant to connect we're meant to love one another so it's like we have to think about that too and now we're in the big old cut off uh trend where oh girl you don't take that cut him off cut her off, cut them friends off. You don't need them. X them out, block them, unfriend them, ghost them. Like, and it's like, mm, no, like we got to be able to have some difficult conversations with people and to be able to communicate through things so that we can have thriving relationships and so that we can actually evolve and learn and grow. And we can't do that in isolation or on our yeah. own because we were meant to be connected to one another. Yeah, absolutely. And I gotta tell y'all that this this whole seclusion thing, I have struggled with. I've gotten better, you know, as as I've been really spending a lot of time with God. But God knows, and I tell Him all the time, Lord, I love you, and I and but you know my heart. Like I am a social being, and. At where I'm, you know, last year sometime I was at the, I was, I was in a bad place. I was depressed. I was in a bad place. And all of that was about this isolation. It's almost like we are all suffering from some form of PTSD because this is a, a traumatic thing. And the thing that used to get me through is that I was so social and I had people around me. And now even, you know, being transparent, not being in a relationship and having somebody to go, oh, I got, you know, all right, boo is here. You know, at least they here was something that I struggled with. And I had to really work on that because I don't like being by myself. I can be by myself. I had to show myself that I could be by myself and I'm good with being by myself, but that's not my preference. So I can imagine folks that really feel the isolation who've always had that somebody around. And it's not that I don't want to deal with my stuff. I just want some companionship every now and then while I'm dealing with my stuff. <laughs> well, you know, I can agree the beginning of this was difficult because, you know, I'm a butterfly, a social butterfly, and, but I was physically unable to do it. I, and corona couldn't stop me, but I was physically unable to do it. And that was difficult for me that I had to ask for help. Like I had to I, I literally get somebody to drive me around from February to May. I couldn't go to the corner store, but it strengthened my relationship with God. I didn't like it, but it strengthened my relationship with God because I thought about, I said, God, I need milk. I need X, Y, Z. And somebody would call me and say, hey, you need to go to the store. And I was like, only you, God, only you, only you. And they come out and say, yeah, you could, we, could, you, we could use my car if, you know, you want to save on gas. No, well, what you want? Actually, I could just bring it to you. And I was like, God, you are amazing. But we needed this time of downtown with God. I'm closer to God today than I was ever before because I didn't have anywhere to go. I couldn't do anything but talk to God. Mm. And, I, I, and I, I love my family. Like, I'm a family person. Um, and, and I've got friends, but my family was a big part of my world. And we are all in different states, so I couldn't pick up and pack up and go. As they was like, look, where you been? And I couldn't drive. And I'm like, well, where y'all been? And you know, this corona's real. And so your state is that uh, emergency, cold red, and I'm at yellow, and this one is at green. So we all like, hey, we making purple here. We can't do this, you know? So that really was my most difficult time, not being able to see my my baby sister and brother and nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles, you know, cause they old, they like, look, you can't come here. <laughs> I ain't coming to get you. <laughs> so, but I I do 
I learned a lot about myself. I'm stronger than what I thought I was. You know, I'm resilient. Um, I'm creative. I'm crafty. I, I made some crafts in this house. Honey, <laughs> some glue sticks, <laughs> some glitter. I lost my mind in the house. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think that, that, that was the purpose of this that God wanted some time and we wasn't giving God time so he was like I'm going to shut the world down and for some for some folks um, they got that I remember Key and I having a conversation about when, when Corona first started about how tired the earth must have been and how you could even feel when Corona first happened, the earth settling, like almost like it was taking a deep breath. Like I'm, y'all was wearing me out. You know, remember we had that conversation, Kia? Even the earth was tired um, during that time. But for a minute, you know, it was our time with God. And I have a question for you ladies. I'm going to start with you, Kia. What did you learn about yourself? Venus said she learned a lot about herself during this time. What did you learn about yourself? I learned that I am a social being. I did learn that I depended on people's company, like my family, more than I thought I did because I was always going. But I also learned that I needed to get closer to God. We needed to have, because I've always been close to God, but I needed, there were some things about me that he began to show me that was not comfortable, but I needed to see it, you know? Um, and, and I learned that once love, loving me is forgiving myself so that I can then heal and move on to the next place that he wants me to be. Because when we carry around guilt, because love, it says love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. And that's, that's just not other people's wrongs. That's our wrongs too. Yeah. Right. And I was replaying some things in my head and God said, let it go. That's done. You can't do nothing about that. What you going to do? You're going to let it go. You're going to move on. You're going to trust me. I don't remember it. So you got to stop rehashing that because it was doing some things to me. So that's what I learned. What did you learn, Kia? Um, well, OK, so the initially when everything was unfolding, like I said earlier, I learned that you have to definitely find your own internal points of joy. Like you have to find ways to make yourself happy, even if it's something small, like making a cup of tea for myself in the afternoon with some ginger and some honey. And, you know, what I mean, like something like that was like, yes, <laughs> it just felt good. Um, and, but it was kind of like, you know, finding things that made you happy, finding ways to be creative is definitely important. I think the latter end of what's going on and what I'm learning right now is a lot of what I thought was God's refusal or rejection of the things that I desired had to deal with me and my impatience and me kind of, um, diverting from the purpose he's given me and also just kind of relinquishing the walk in the journey with him. And, and that wasn't God's fault. That was me just kind of like, well, God, I did X, Y, Z and I didn't get my gift or my present or my this or my that. So I'm going to try some nips. Well, I'm going to go this way or I'm going wow. to I try, I tried the fasting and I tried this and I tried that and I tried that. And it's like, you expect this, like this, okay, here's your gift for doing these things well done. But those things well done are a part of your journey, a part of your purpose towards the reward that God wants to give you. And it's not necessarily a reward that you would think because in your journey, sometimes your mind is transformed to the point where you, what you thought you wanted and the form you wanted it to be in is completely different than when you started your journey. So it's so important to keep the journey going to have faith in God and to trust him in the ways that he is taking you, because that is where you can kind of fulfill everything that he would like you to experience. And that's part of what I'm learning now. Cause I got to a point where I was like, you know, just quieting that relationship. And I had gotten really close with God where I can definitely and for sure hear him. And I felt like a sense of purity and a, a knowledge and a wisdom that I didn't have before. And it's like, 
God is saying, I never really, I never walked away from you. I, you the one that was like, you tired of doing this and you moved on. It's like you give a, a puzzle to your child and they get bored with it and they go on somewhere else and then they're frustrated. I'm bored. I don't have anything to do. And they think it's their parents' fault. And it's like, no, I'm not the one that told you to stop putting this puzzle together. You wanted to <laughs> go be bored or, you know, like, so, I don't know. That's one of the biggest learnings is just to, to be diligent in my um, walk with God and my pursuit of him. And, th and that alone is what will be the reward or where my mind will start to change and, and I will gain revelation. That's good. Wow. That was really good. That immediate gratification didn't come. Yeah. Well, aren't we like that? We are so God's children. We we are so serious. <laughs> I we will have a tantrum in a minute on God. Well, no, I, I did everything you said, and that ain't happened the way you said, and now I'm mad at you. Like he like, okay, well, let's look at what you did in this. <laughs> or I never said because your days and my days look real different. Your time and yeah. my time looks real different. And yeah. maybe I'm not through with you yet. Maybe that's why you ain't get it. Or maybe that wasn't what you were supposed to have. Or maybe that's not the time you're supposed to have it in. Because I call these shots. But we yeah. get real, we get bolsterous with our Lord and Savior. Well, look, let me just say, I'm a barter with you right now. And yeah. I just thank him for being forgiven. Because we I know that I have been like, listen, Lord, here's, I've been giving him the whole run down. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> You know, he's looking at me like, what? Nah, this is what's getting ready to happen. Yeah. But he loves us like that, that he does forgive. M better than we do. Way better yeah. than we do. Yeah. And that's that's good. I, uh, I know I've done that as well. You know, like, hey, I've been here for X amount of time and I did all I could do and I want my prize to be this. And he's like, nah. Or I'll walk away, you know, out of frustration. Because I didn't get my microwave gift. I like that kid. I ain't get my prize. <laughs> Look, Cracker Jack box is empty. <laughs> oh, on to the next Cracker Jack box. But God is not like that. That's not who he is. You know, he's not he's like that. He and we, that, like that means we've grown. That means in a, almost two years, we've grown. That's a, this is some grown up stuff. We did some real soul searching and knowing that he loves us regardless, you know, and that nothing can keep us from him, even when we do crazy stuff that we walk away from him. He won't leave yeah. us. He yeah. loves us that much. And much, much more. I want to talk about love is patient because I, I was thinking about why God is that the first thing that love is, is patient. And I thought about how I love. And I don't love patiently. I am growing to love patiently, but I don't love patiently. And I say um, that because I'm easily offended by those that I love the most. And I expect them to read my mind. I've made mistakes in even relationships because I am not patient. The same way that I'm waiting for my prize from God, I'm waiting for my prize from other people, that reciprocation, right? Um, so it is, it is, it's true to say that the way we treat God is probably the way we're treating other people, right? So if we're waiting for a prize from God, we probably we, we probably exhibit those same behaviors to other people, whether it be our friends or in relationships, right? So what do you ladies think about love is patient? Because I'm going to tell you what, I prayed for patience one time. I'll never do that again because everything was rocking my patience. <laughs> everything was rocking my patience. God was like, I'm going to exercise your patience. I mean, the lady at the counter in the store, I go in the store like, why, why am I in this long line? Why she can't have me up? Where, do, where is the manager? <laughs> Mark, right you, you be tripping a little bit, dog. <laughs> you got a different level of impatience. <laughs> okay. 
Well, can, can I give y'all a definition of patience? See, I'm, I'm a definition lady. And so it says patience is able to accept or tolerate delays, problems, or suffering without being be, without becoming annoyed or anxious. Hallelujah. I don't have patience. Now that I know the definition. Oh, Hello. But that's, that's that's, yes, that's but that's working. why he, that's why he put it first. Because we have to be able to suffer without becoming annoyed with one another and without becoming anxious. Okay, so this is not working out for me. I'm out. That's what you were talking about earlier, Kia, cutting everybody off. That's that annoyance. That's that anxious. Oh, you know what? This is not working out for me. I'm out. I'm cutting you off. I'm... We have to learn to be patient. It's, you know? and it's really connected to a fear. Impatience is really connected to a fear. Like if I, if, if, you Ooh. know, if this doesn't happen in this way at this time, then it's all done. Or I got your fears will come, come true. Like that, that's really what it is. It's a fear. And, you know, God did not create the spirit of fear within us. And that's why we can have patience. But I will tell you in this day and age, I've seen people at a heightened level of impatience. Like even the way you have these drag racers racing around your car and people just, you can't be going too slow. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not the best driver, but people are really they go crazy about a lane or a speed out. And it's just like, and then it's just like the split second thing. And, you know, this morning, my daughter, she asked me, she said, mom, why is it like this? And I said, what are you talking about? The world. I'm like, what do you mean? What, how is the world? She's like, it's just crazy, mommy. And I'm like, you know, I think a part of the reason why the world is like it is, is that we each don't take on an accountability for what we bring to the world. We expect the world outside of us to kind of get it together, but we don't show up in even small moments for one another and for ourselves in a way that is accountable. And I think a part of being patient, even in our exchanges with one another, is a part of us showing up with that accountability to make the world look differently because it passes on. So if I am like, for example, it was a Chick-fil-A the other day and I asked for another sauce because I like my sauces. And the lady was like, I already put two in the bag, ma'am. Do you want another one? And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> but after I rode away, I was like, I didn't have to take that tone with her. Even if she was rude to me, I didn't have, I have to have accountability for how I react. So I could have said, yes, ma'am, thank you. And then in the next person that comes up in line, she might have softened her heart and changed her response or her um, reaction to them. So we pass on our energy. We're all connected. And, and so we have to be accountable for how we react, how we treat one another, even in the most minute ways, even with the cashier, even with your neighbor next door, even when, even when someone does something that merits you getting upset, you still are accountable to how you are going to respond. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I'm working on it. I went in the store the other day and the line was long. And immediately I said, well, I'm looking at the cashier because I got my look. Well, look, what do I need to call the manager? But then I went up to her and I said, how are you doing today? I said, you know what? Thank you for, you know, really being so patient because I know that you're doing this by yourself. I had to put myself in her shoes. And even today I went into the store and this lady looked at me and rolled her eyes and I was in the stance, but I said, hello. <laughs> she was like, hi. And I'm saying, Lord, just help me because it takes practice. Wow, you know, I'm so proud of you. I know, right? Because <laughs> my daughter will tell you, I have, in, and I'm not going to speak it, I have I have a whole bunch of patients now, but in the past, yeah. I've struggled with that. Like, Kia is slow, and she drives me insane in the past. Come on, we got to get it. This one's got to yeah. do it. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. And here she is. Mom, come on. It's not that. Calm down. And that makes me even more. Like, what? We got to be there. <laughs> but 
Listen, the Lord says you don't add one day to your life by worrying and being anxious. So I want my days to be long. So I'm not, I'm trying to do better, Miss Fina. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm with you. I just reading the definition, because you know, we know how oh, patience, you know, just but reading the definition, it just kind of shut me down. I, I don't have patience. And I'm gonna ask God to help me within that area because I get anxious. My thing is the anxiousness. I'm like, oh, we're gonna be late. We're gonna be behind time. I gotta get it, gotta get it. When I when I pack for a vacation, I pack a week out. Like every day, a week out, I'm putting something in. Okay, I don't need this anymore. I don't need to use this. I'll put it in the bag and I'm packed up. So like two or three days before, I already know I got everything. And when I don't do that, mind blown. I'm like, what? Like last minute stuff. And I, I'm learning to have patience with my son. My son, he's got um, some things going on. And because if I, yeah, he's just different. So he moves at a turtle's pace. But my brother told him, yeah, my, my daughter, my, my brother told him, he said, because we're big, my son is like, Five nine, two ten, size fifteen foot. He said, "Man, if we move fast, we're gonna knock everything down." And he ain't never lied. If my son turned fast, he knocked everything off of the shelf. So I'm learning to have patience with him. So his morning has to start at six a.m., even though he don't have to be to school till eight thirty. But it's got to start at 6 a.m. because it's going to take him time to get in the shower, to get up, and he got and he's going to eat his breakfast. I don't care what time you wake him up. He's going to have some food. My son is not leaving the house without breakfast and either a cup of milk or a cup of tea. He like a little hot tea too, Kia. Yeah. So he's like, mm-mm, we're not doing, those are the two things I require every morning. So I have to get him up extra early so he can get a shower because he don't like to take a shower at night. He want to take a shower in the day, you know, to give him up. But then he got to wash his hair and then he got to sing a song. And I'm like, <laughs> Lord, today. <laughs> he's, Listen. He's, he's 14, so I'm learning patience. I don't know wow. what you're doing. My Listen. daughter takes hour showers. <laughs> and I can tell her if something starts at three o'clock and I tell her it's starting at starting at one, Kia, thinking that because I said one, she gonna be on time. He she come rolling up one thirty. And it's always see Not mom, I know. And she's so sweet. You know, I know, but this happened and that happened. The other day she lived all the way in Maryland. Now, I told her something started later than what earlier than what it did, and she come up, well, I'm just leaving the house. What? <laughs> See, stuff like that be like, oh, I, I have a hard time. And I'm, I'm like, if the God gave me Kia to help me with patience, but I don't have her for 40 years and I'm still trying to learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping I catch on quick because this one right here, turtle. Turtle, turtle, turtle. And he's, and he, mom, you know, when he was little, I used to work at night. And so I had to take him to the babysitter. So at 11 o'clock, I'm getting in the car and knowing I got to be to work at 11.45. And I still got to go 20 minutes that way and then 20 minutes back that way. And so I was like, come on, did you get your blanket? Da, 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 da. And he's like, well, I look at the stars. They're so beautiful. Oh, and I wanted, to, I wanted to put my hand around his throat, but he was stubborn. <laughs> and I said, Lord, if you don't get this boy, I'm looking at the stars though. I said, if you don't get him in the car, I'm gonna kill him tonight. <laughs> so he moves slow. That's his that's his that's his speed. Slow. Yeah. We don't get there. It's okay. Well, yeah. let me say that I, I it, it really struck me and it, it, it struck it strikes me even more now that we're discussing it, that 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 patience. That there is something about patience that God wants us to have. That's why he put it first, right? Yeah. And he has to be the most patient God in the world with us. Ooh. So if he can be that patient with us, at least this child right here is something worth practicing, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're at 10 of the hour, but I, I, I want to kind of wind this all up. And so I'm going to give you two 
last two questions, right? So if there was something about love, because this is the thing that that we that that is told to us that if we had more love, we could heal the world. If there was a practice of love or a way that we could show more love, what would it be? How can we share the importance of love to everybody? For me, I think the physical touch. I it's something about a hug that'll change your day. That's just that embrace that I took time out to give you some love. If we embrace each other more and not curse each other more with our mouths, I think we'll be in a better state than we are. You know, I I, hand, I I'm a hugger. I I've I've hugged random strange people. Hey, come on in for a hug. You know, Corona made it a little difficult now, but I still get my hugs in. You got a mask on, I got a mask. Let me get a hug. I think that that is the most intimate for strangers and family and loved ones. I think that's so intimate just to embrace, like, you know, you know, something about a hug. I miss my mom's hug. You know, my mom hugged me. She hugged me. She hugged the the hell right out of me. I'm like, oh my, you know, and then release me. And I just, the weight of the world is gone. So I think a hug really just takes the pressure off of being extraordinary or being who you thought I should be or your expectations of me. Just a hug, just boom, hug it out. You know, back in the day, they say hug it out. I think of embrace a real good, not that, what they call them, church pack. And go, I'm to my hug. <laughs> get count to 10 and get it in and then release. Woo, it changes your day. Yeah. It changes true. the trajectory of your day. A good love hug. And I think we need more of that. Mm-hmm. That's why I think this is such proven that this, this, this disease, this plague, this corona is of the devil because it's separating us. So, yes. you know, people don't even want to look at you, let alone hug you. It's, it's, yes. it's creating more division than there ever was. And so we have to be creative about how we even maybe put us paint a smile on our mask. We have to be creative about how we show love to people nowadays. What do you yes. think, Kia? I think you can touch people with communication. Um, I think that we should be willing to just talk without any judgment. Like a lot of times people talk because they want to prove something. They want to teach somebody. They want to change their mind. They want to show them that their way is the right way. And it's like, let people live and, and think the way they want to think. At least let them get it out, you know, however they feel, whatever it is. You know, you could be respectful. You can listen. You could take it all in and let that be that. You could share whatever questions that you have to understand a little bit more deeply. But communication is is one of the ways that we can love one another. And, and communication in terms of really listening to each other. Like, and I think that's important. I also think it's important that we see one another. Um, I feel like we go from day to day and there's certain people we just don't see. Like, you ever been in a situation where it could be you or it could be somebody else, a person will enter a room and because no one knows their title or what they do, no one really recognizes them or sees them, doesn't not really even talk to them. But then it's like, oh, I'm Mr. Such and such. And it's like, oh, I need to talk to you now <laughs> or I need, I see you now. And it's just like, give everybody, see everyone. Don't let anyone go by you and be blind to them, no matter who they are. If they're a person, they deserve to be seen, acknowledged, smile that, do your smiles and smile with your eyes. Because I work in a school building and we just, we, you don't even see the faces of the children or your um your colleagues anymore. So it's really different, but you still can nod your head, look them in the eye. Say, hey, good morning. No matter who it is, no matter who it is, even if it's a, a pre-K student or it's an eighth grader or it's a 
person who works in the kitchen or is bus driver or is the principal will see everybody and um and be willing to have a conversation. I think that's that's important for spreading love. That's good, ladies. Love. Yeah. I like that song. Kia had that song playing the other day. Um, love by Kurt Franklin. Yeah. I think that's what really sparked this whole conversation. Let me see if I can find it and we can we could kind of go out on that song. Love by Kirk Franklin. All right. Ladies, I want to thank you for your time tonight. I want to thank those who have joined us. Even if you didn't comment, we appreciate you join, uh, joining us as we just kind of broached the subject of love because it is the most important thing. God says the most important thing is to love God with all your heart and soul and love your neighbor as yourself, which means you got to love yourself too. So that's some love that we got to work on. So yeah. I appreciate it. I love you. Girl. I love you, lady. Yeah, my okay. beautiful child. And listen, this is just girl. This is called the Valley on Untapped Music Radio, and we gonna go out with a little love. Is that love? That's not love. <laughs> Is that love? That's a love theory. Can you be? Well, this is what we're going out on. Can you see?